Welcome to the video where we're going to be talking about elasticity of the demand function. So in this example, we are given a demand function. In this case, it is a square root of 517 minus P. P is the price, right? So we are asked to find first the general function for the elasticity, then elasticity at the given price 275. Then we need to state if the demand function is elastic, inelastic, or unit or has unit elasticity. And then finally, we are asked to find where, or it means at which P, we will have maximum revenue. Let's first review what we know about elasticity of the demand function. Definitely, it's a formula first. E of P is negative sign in front of the fraction. Remember that. Find the derivative of the demand function first and divide by the original, but don't forget also to multiply by the price. And if E of P, which is elasticity function, less than 1 and demand is inelastic, equals to 1 and has unit elasticity, greater than 1, then it is elastic. That's what you need to know for this topic. Okay, the first question is, find a general formula for the elasticity using this formula we just reviewed. Well, the demand function is given as a square root of 517 minus P. So we want to find the derivative of that first. If you're not feeling comfortable doing that because we're working with radicals, then you know rewrite it as exponent one half. Now you know how to work with the power rule. Power rule says that one half gonna go down, then it will have 517 minus p to the negative one half, and then also don't forget times a derivative of the function inside, a derivative of 517 minus p is negative one. Don't forget this negative one. We can also rewrite all of this as one, uh, negative one over two a square root 517 minus p. How come? Because negative one half is actually one over a square root, right? One half is a square root. Negative means put in a denominator. Now we can finish the formula. The formula e of p will be so remember the negative sign in front and remember that there's original i'll write down for you again d is at the bottom p is at the top and then d prime is at the, the top as well so let's plug everything in negative sign original function was square root 517 minus p i'll write down this first because it's easy p also is easy don't touch that and now copy the derivative and a derivative, as you can see, is the fraction. So we'll have a fraction on the, in the numerator of the fraction. Negative 1 all over 2 and square root 517 minus p. Put it in parentheses to make it more visual. Now I need to simplify this. And it kind of looks scary at first. But this is how I usually explain it. I want to create one single fraction out of those two fractions. Whatever is in a denominator should stay in a denominator. So I will keep whatever this orange piece, 517 minus p, in a denominator. Then, whatever was in a denominator of the, of the fraction on the top should go to the denominator as well, right? Because we're dividing by the two square roots of 517 minus p. There's a minus over here. So this blue part will go to the denominator as well, times 2. A square root 517 minus p. Then minus 1 and p are in the numerator, so they should stay in the numerator. Now it's getting a little bit better because the square root times the square root means we have no square roots anymore. It means I'm going to have just 2 and then I will have 517 minus p. And the top I will have minus minus p, that's just plus p. And this is my e elasticity of the demand function uh, of the price p found it so this was a pretty challenging step but now we can just plug in everything inside and be happy about the results because b just asks me to check b b just asked me to check what is happening at p equals 275 and also state the result for the elasticity function so we basically copy and plug in or substitute this p everywhere I see p. So it's going to be 275 everywhere. E at 275 is 275 all over 2 
517 minus 275. That's basically some kind of price we are practicing for the model and we, we want to see what kind of result will be for the elasticity function. So it's going to be carefully grab the calculator and you will have 25 over 44. So the important part is to find out if this number is less than one or greater than one. It is less than one. So I will say E at 275 is less than one. Then the result is we can claim that demand demand is, do you remember? Inelastic. Inelastic. So that's one of the answers. We're claiming this. And also put this in the box as well. 25 over 44. Now C asks, uh, that's the last question actually. C asks, at what P, find P, such that, ST, such that maximizes the elasticity of the demand. Let's see the question again, just to make sure you understand. The value, find the values of P for which the total revenue is maximum. Okay, so we're maximizing revenue. So that's the idea here. We want such that revenue function uh, is maximized. Maximized or maximum or reaches the maximum value and so on. Well, this happens when E of P is 1. Check your note. That's basically the knowledge they're checking here. Do you remember what does it mean to have maximum revenue? It means E of P should reach 1. So that means we want to find or we just need to solve the equation for P when the right hand side is 1. So I'm going to copy this right now. See this guy and set it equal to 1 and solve copy paste and now put away the box solving when all of this is one that's what we, they want us to do how to solve fractions like these you can actually check my other video where i'm practicing how to work with fractions equations that involve fractions basically i will multiply by the denominator to get rid of the fraction 2 times 517 minus p left hand side and the right hand side and i'll have p equals 2 times 517 minus p now i want to solve for p but p ha uh, is on the left hand side and on the right hand side okay let's distribute to p equals 2 times 517 is 10 34 right and then minus 2p and then I will collect pieces with P on one side. So for example, left hand side, P plus 2P is 3P equals 1034. Finally, divide by the coefficient in front of the P to isolate P. And that's how you solve equations like this. P is 1034 over 3, which is 344.67. So at this price, we can we know that the revenue will be maximum because at this price, E of P was 1. And that's how we solve it. Uh, that's how we answered the question. We were looking for P when E of P is 1. So the equation and got the answer. So let's see how much information you require to know for, for one problem only. You need to know the equation of the elasticity of the demand function e of p p times derivative of the demand function over original demand function with a negative sign in front of it you need to know what to claim about demand function when it is inelastic elastic or has unit elasticity and you need to know what does it mean uh, this third question what does it mean to have maximum revenue this is the case maximum revenue so Hopefully that helps you and now you feel a little bit more confident working with problems like this. Very interesting problems because they're very realistic, used in many statistical problems. And indeed uh, people are working using these derivatives and these formulas uh, when they work in the industry in banks. Thank you for watching and see you next time.